Hello YouTube, Josh here, normally with the channel ZZZ Giant Awake, but it is Saturday on The Breakfast Club. Wayne thought that he wrapped up the conversation on conspiracy theories, but I actually wanted to discuss it. I would have discussed it last week, but I am still in the process of unpacking. I moved a couple weeks ago and, and was nowhere near complete last week, so I ended up spending most of my Saturday doing that, with every intention of still making a video and not being able to get around to it. So here I am today to talk a little bit about conspiracy theories. So there have been a lot of conspiracy theories that I've considered. I actually will listen to almost every conspiracy theory. And I used to consider myself a little bit of the truther. I didn't really talk about it with many people, but I definitely bought into the conspiracy that 9-11 was an inside job, that there were bombs planted, and all of that. But I've changed. I've changed my, my views on that. And what caused my views to change on that was I actually sat down with somebody who was a, has his doctorate in physics. I laid everything out that I thought would convince him that it was an inside job. And, and he would step by step went through and kind of showed me why, hey, it may be true, but Occam's razor leans more towards there not being bombs planted on the inside, that the structure of the Twin Towers can fail like that and that fires can indeed burn hot enough and, and long enough to compromise the integrity of, of steel and other fundamental materials. So then I decided to go in and check it. Now that doesn't mean that all of my answers about what happened on September 11th have been answered, but it goes to demonstrate what I think the point is, or at least the point I would like to make about conspiracy theories, is that they typically take things a step too far. First off, I would like to point out that not every conspiracy theory takes things a step too far. Some take it several steps too far, like Obama being a secret Muslim who has been put in as president to take our guns away, and all of this has been orchestrated by lizard people. An example of something that is taken a step too far is with the Bernie Sanders recent uh, election. So I am most definitely a, a Bernie supporter, and something that got misconstrued by my last video two weeks ago was that I said that there may be fraud. I didn't say that there was fraud, but there are those who support Bernie who definitely think that there was fraud. I don't think that there was fraud, not in the sense of taking ballots and switching them out. The DNC definitely, definitely has their finger on the scale, or had their finger on the scale at the time, and this has been borne out by the emails that have, have been leaked. People were talking about ways that, that might convince nominal Democrats to dislike Bernie Sanders by stating he was an atheist. And that in and of itself is a pretty disgusting thing and, and is a good reminder that us atheists still have a ways to go. But there are, are some conspiracy theories that I find that I want to know more about. The main one that comes to mind is the situation in Turkey with Erdogan. Whether or not he staged the coup itself so then that way he could do a power grab and so that way he could clear the military of any dissension. So at the time the coup took place, um, Erdogan happened to be outside of, of the country, it's somewhere safe, and the prime minister of Turkey was also somewhere safe. Typically a coup is not attempted unless you have your sights on the person who you're trying to overthrow. Now there's questions about maybe they were too desperate and they, the people who decided to plan the coup and, and attempt it, they were so desperate at the time that they were willing to try even with the circumstances being as terrible as they are. Uh, a few other weird things is the people who have been the primary operators uh, in that coup somehow managed to escape the country, while tens of thousands of Turkish officials have been able to be either arrested, detained, or relieved of duty of some sort. And why would Erdogan know, have a list of tens of thousands of people who might be involved? These are political opponents and people who might uh, go against him in the government who have political power. So there's a lot of shady circumstance that goes along there. This situation sounds like something that Putin would do, something right out of Russian politics where 
Putin keeps on shifting from president to prime minister and then moving the power over to the other position as he takes control of that office. And now he's got the power to run essentially uncontested forever for the rest of his life until he decides to retire. And it looks like Erdogan is doing the same thing. Now this is an issue if you want Turkey to have a democracy, especially if you want any hope of them shifting more uh, towards a liberal party. Like, so the topic I'd like to discuss this week on The Breakfast Club um, with the other hosts and acknowledging that we all have channels separate from this and that we've all uh, shot hundreds of movies um, is what movie that you have made do you feel has been the most important work that you've done or is the most important to you? Tell us about it. What things would you change about it if you could? Or what criticisms might you have about it? And what made you proud about that work or what made you excited that it got the reception that it did? Um, until next week, thank you guys.